and within two years, Rakashi had regained power. The people, though, were no longer prepared to endure strict communist rule. In February 1956, Khrushchev made a long speech that catalogued Stalin's crimes. Rakashi was now forced to admit his own errors and agreed that Laszlo Roik's trial and execution back in 1949 had been an ideological error. Thousands attended Roik's public reburial as a mark of their opposition to Rakashi. Publicly humiliated, he left Hungary. Throughout Eastern Europe, people clamoured for change. Mr. Gomulka, the Polish leader, won limited independence from the Soviet Union, an example the Hungarians wanted to follow. On October the 23rd, 1956, in Budapest, students held the first unofficial demonstration under communist rule. They demanded free speech, free elections, and the withdrawal of Soviet troops. Crowds gathered throughout the afternoon. Symbols of Soviet power were attacked. The hammer and sickle was ripped out of the Hungarian flag. A huge statue of Stalin was smashed up. Soviet books and propaganda were burnt. That night, demonstrators made for the headquarters of the Hungarian state radio. They wanted their demands to be broadcast to the nation. The authorities allowed a delegation into the building to negotiate, but when they failed to return, the crowd became restless. Suddenly, the AVO, the secret police, opened fire from inside. Those shots turned a peaceful protest into a revolution. News of the battle spread like wildfire and skirmishes broke out all over the city. People got guns by disarming Arvo men in the streets, others by raiding the munitions factories. A general strike was called and thousands of workers became freedom fighters. Soviet Red Army tanks moved in to restore order. Later that day, people welcomed the news that Imre Nagy had been made Prime Minister again. But even he misjudged the mood, calling for order, calm and discipline, when people were prepared to do anything to get the Soviets out. A bus contractor was also among the people whom I was leading. And on the second day, we came to a uh, crossroad, which was under, a Rus under two Russian tanks crossfire. And we had to pass it. The poor conductress was volunteering that she will eliminate at least one of the tanks. And she was putting half a dozen hand grenades in her bag. They started to run for the tanks. When she was about 50 yards for the tanks, I think she got the first shot, but she was still running, running and running. And when she felt that she can't reach them, she started to draw hand grenades on the tank to near to her. And fortunately, one of them, somehow got in the turret because the turret door was open and so the Russian tank blew up, but she died. More and more people all over Hungary joined the freedom fighters. Many Hungarian soldiers, policemen and hundreds of children. Children brought up to communism now fought Soviet soldiers. In spite of their lack of training, the Hungarians did well against the Soviet tanks drawing them into narrow streets and dropping Molotov cocktails into their petrol tanks to destroy them. Many, like Greg Pongratz, learned how hard it was to kill for the first time. The Russian soldiers, they were coming from uh, door to door out on the street. And, uh, and uh, I was in a second floor window and uh, I had a rifle, a mouser. And I pointed the head of the Russian soldier who was looking out, and I pulled the trigger. And I saw the Russian soldier far down on the, on the sidewalk, and I started to cry. It is a terrible feeling when you see that you shot somebody and is dead. I don't wish that feeling to anybody. On Thursday, the 25th of October, at least 300 unarmed demonstrators were mown down by Arvo machine gun fire outside Parliament. They were to be avenged. The freedom fighters stormed the Arvo police headquarters. When the building was searched, 
the mutilated bodies of a group of students were found in the basement. In revenge, Arvo guards were flung out onto the street along with their secret files. There was no mercy. All over Hungary, Arvo were beaten to death. After five days of bloody battles, it was the freedom fighters who controlled the streets. They had won. Untrained civilians had beaten the ruthless Arvo and two Soviet divisions. Imran Oj now called for the removal of the Soviet occupying forces. On Monday, October the 29th, Soviet tanks withdrew from Budapest. On the banks of the Danube, people watched the families of Soviet diplomats packing their bags. The Hungarians who looked on hoped that some support for their stand would come from the West. People read uncensored papers and pamphlets for news of the changes sweeping across the country. Hungarians enjoyed a marvellous few days, a reprieve. Budapest was alive with a new sense of freedom. There was time to treat the wounded. The prisons were opened and out came the victims of years of repression, including Cardinal Mincenti. These days of liberation were to be short-lived. The Soviet leaders were worried by Nodja's announcement of free elections, which could mean the end of communist rule. There were also rumours that he intended withdrawing Hungary from the Warsaw Pact, the Eastern European military alliance controlled by the Soviet Union. On Thursday, November the 1st, thousands of Soviet soldiers and tanks crossed back into Hungary. That evening, Imre Noj broadcast that if these soldiers weren't withdrawn, the government would proclaim Hungarian neutrality and break away from Soviet control. Nudge had gone too far. With growing unrest in several East European countries, the Soviets needed to set an example. Soviet tanks re-entered Budapest early on November the 4th to crush the revolution. The battle was bloody and one-sided. Where resistance was discovered, whole buildings were brought down. The world looked on as the Soviets savagely reimposed their rule on Hungary. Imre Noj fled to the Yugoslav embassy, but was later arrested by the Soviets and, like hundreds of others, was executed. During the weeks that followed, 200,000 people fled the country, while thousands more were arrested and sent to labour camps up to 3,000 Hungarians were killed in their bid for freedom in 1956.